what is hydrostatic equilibrium in stars? Well, it's very important for stellar evolution and explaining all the different steps in a star's life. So how it forms, how it sits on the main sequence and how it comes to the end part of its life. So it's very important to understand in all aspects. So first, let's go to the HR diagram. Now, if you haven't come across that before, it's a scatter plot of all different sorts of stars and it's plotted against their surface temperature and the luminosity. So you can see kind of on the left hand side at the bottom, you've got like the hottest stars and then it goes across to the coolest ones. And then as you go up on the y axis, your luminosity, they get more luminous. Now, the sun sits kind of kind of a third down on the uh, main sequence part. So the main sequence is in the center, that diagonal line there. And the larger the star, the higher up on the main sequence they are because they, they have a hotter surface temperature. They're more luminous. They're bigger, which kind of makes sense. Now, on the main sequence, they are fusing hydrogen into helium in their cores. So this is the main part of the star's life. It sits there for the majority of its life, actually, and it's fusing hydrogen into helium in their core. Now, when it's doing that, it's obviously generating energy in its core. That energy and the photons there need to make their way out to the outer edge, and that in turn causes a outward pressure like essentially gas pressure and that goes outward from the star now the stars are quite large they obviously have a significant amount of gravi gravitational force associated with them wants to collapse them so when a star is in hydrostatic equilibrium that outward pressure from the energy being generated in its core is balanced by the gravitational force trying to collapse it so it sits there in equilibrium and as long as the outward pressure is equal to the gravitational force and there's no changes there then it's sitting in hydrostatic equilibrium and this is what's happening on the main sequence for all stars they're they're basically balanced however what happens when they no longer balance well going back to the hr diagram again on the upper left you've got this group called giants and super giants and this is an evolutionary path for sun-like stars or stars around about the same sort of size as the sun they get to a point where they no longer are fusing hydrogen in their cores and they swell up into the red giant phase. So it, what happens there is those forces are no longer balanced out. So what happens is fusion stops in the core. So there's no longer any hydrogen to fuse into helium. The helium core collapses and in a, a star like the sun, there just isn't enough gravitational force to collapse it far enough to heat it up to then start fusing the helium. So that core collapses, it heats up, but not to the point where it starts fusing again. It's no longer in hydrostatic equilibrium because that gravitational force obviously overcomes any outward force because there's nothing actually forcing outwards now. Now, at the same time, extra hydrogen is then pulled in in a shell around that helium core that then starts fusing fusing as it did in the, the central core beforehand because that collapse has generated additional heat it then means that you've got an outward pressure again but because that shell of hydrogen that's fusing now into helium has a greater volume than it had in the original core it's actually generating more outward force now the thing is the gravitational force hasn't changed so the gravitational force trying to collapse is the same because the mass of the star hasn't changed, but there's a greater force outwards now, and that causes a swelling of the star. The outer layers become more puffed out, and that's why it will become a red giant. So, but at this point here, it then becomes back into hydrostatic equilibrium because they're going to be balanced. But during the process, as it swells up, then it's not because one of the forces overcomes the other. Now, once that phase has finished, those outer layers essentially dissipate, you get a planetary nebula and then you're left with the central core and you end up with a white dwarf. Now white dwarfs are very small stars, they have a very small radius, about the size of the Earth, but that means they're not very luminous even though they have very very high surface temperatures. Now what's happened here? Well the fusion has completely stopped in its core now. It's got to the point where it can no longer generate any energy at all, and that core collapses. The outer layers have been dissipated. Again, at this point, it's not in hydrostatic equilibrium because the gravitational force overcomes any outward force, and it collapses. Now, the thing here is, 
there's not enough gravitational force, at least for a white dwarf, to completely collapse it any further. And it's held up by electron degeneracy pressure instead, because you're pushing everything so close together, then actually there's a electron degeneracy pressure, which is then holding it together, and it's then balanced again. But thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.